See brown in your face. Have you heard of everything at once? Do you know about everything at once? It's internationally known. Aliens listen to it. It's the best. <laughs> if there's everything. something you're looking for in the 814, or feeling a little bored and think there ain't no more, ain't no check more. out everything at once and allow it to be your source. It's that raw podcast that's always showing support, highlighting the scene. No need to take I 90 to peep or 79 to see how it be. Interviewing your locals with mindsets that are global, innovators and creators on every single upload. So much going on in the EPA. Everything at once will keep you up to date. Amazing guests. What you doing? Come through and hang with Tony and Dave. Community driven. Bringing everything at once from around the way. Everything at once from around the way. Hey. Please listen. We love you. <laughs> everything at once. Everything at once. Hello. Hi. And welcome to another incredible mind-blowing episode of everything at once first off we want to thank all of those people who supported us on patreon you guys mean so much to us you make this all possible we want to thank our producers brian g josh w e and d nick d g and sadie m patreon is an awesome way to support the show and say thanks you can become a patreon supporter by clicking the link below and choosing to become an intern assistant or producer level supporter that's right for just five dollars you can be an intern and we will say your name on this show and who doesn't want that and once we get 10 Dave's going to do something incredible. I don't know what it's going to be, but let's just say it's going to blow your mind. It's guaranteed to blow your mind. We now want to shout out all the local businesses that have sponsored this episode. These businesses get the everything at once stamp of approval. We couldn't do it without them. Uh, wait, hold on a second, Dave. I just got a message from Cauldron and Thorn. Maybe it's something uh, new they want us to talk about. Maybe it's important. Two years ago, America's first family of darkness landed in Erie, Pennsylvania. In a few short months, they built the world's largest shop, dedicated to the magical arts and metaphysical sciences. This summer, they invite you to explore the shadows of the human experience, a carefully curated catalog of arcane artifacts and occult ephemera for the discerning collector. Cauldron and Thorn proudly presents The Dark Curiosities of the Vault. Was it? Was it? The dark what? curiosities of the vault is what he ended that with. The dark curiosity. What? Speaking of, was that Morgan Freeman? It, it it sounded a lot like Morgan Freeman. That video had some, gr or that audio file had some great production, and uh, maybe this has something to do with that show they were talking about on Facebook. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Um, it definitely could be a possibility, though. Uh, do you think they're they they're talking about that new black wall that they built up with the bookshelf? Yeah, what's the deal with that? Do you think that there's some kind of like secret passageway or something funky going on there? I, at that store, anything's possible. It could lead to the nether realms, another universe, the multiverse that we always talk about in this show. Maybe yeah. that's back there. Uh, but I mean, they're really kind of leaving us hanging and leaving us a lot to guess. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll just have to. Wait to hear more about what's going on at Cauldron and Thorn. Knowing our friends there at Cauldron and Thorn, the possibilities are literally, literally endless. Now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Speaking of new construction, let's talk about our friends at Solid State. Solid State takes pride in all home remodeling products. Solid State specializes in bathroom remodeling, kitchen renovation, window and door installation, custom design work, and more, including painting, flooring, drywall, siding, and decks. Get a free quote today by calling Nick at 814-397-7854. Solid people. Solid product. Solid, solid state, state construction. construction. Got a problem with your car? Tommy's Automotive can take care of it. They, they can fix anything car related. They're the most reliable, trustworthy service provider that we know. That's right. Tommy's Automotive can take care of brakes, exhaust, fluid changes, spark plugs, and all other maintenance needs. Tommy's Automotive also does fluid film undercoating. Book your appointment today. Call Tommy at 814-384-8088. You know, Tony, all of this... Ugh, hard work plugging the sponsors. It's got me a little tired. Let me get a sip of my coffee. What? That coffee smells incredible, Dave. 
Well, it should, Tony, because it's ours. Oh, yeah, well, of course. That makes sense. Everything at Once Studios now has our own coffee, the Everything at Once Roast, made by North Edge Craft Coffee. Message me or Dave to get your bag today. Yeah, do it. North Edge, Co- North Edge Craft Coffee is your local specialty coffee roaster. North Edge Craft Coffee takes pride in being a local favorite. They believe with their reasonable prices, fresh roasted product, and creative coffee options, they're a hit in any mug. Any mug. North Edge Craft Coffee can be bought on their website, northedgecoffee.com, or at their store location on 1222 Linden Avenue between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Speaking of North Edge Coffee. Well, speaking of. Our next guest. Oh, yeah. Doug Baker, the master roaster of North Edge Craft Coffee, is here with us today for you. Yeah, Doug's a super cool dude. We got to learn a lot about how he got into the coffee business and, and all the intricacies that, that make him really the, the premier roaster, uh, not only the, in this area, but I'd like to say the whole entire world. Probably the world. And there's also a strong possibility for those 10 Patreon sponsors that Dave may go on a trip to somewhere and pick up a bag of coffee in uh, possibly a war-torn country. It could be possibly happen but you know hap- but you're never gonna know no, until unless you get 10 patreon sponsors this is on you now this is up to you make dave's coffee dreams come true doug baker <laughs> and in an alternate universe nobody <laughs> nobody went upstairs to show you guys <laughs> that never happened amazing <laughs> everything nice. at once roast it's incredible. You guys are going to love it. Yeah. Yeah, we're drinking it right here. We're drinking it right here. It's incredible. That slurp, if you guys couldn't tell, yeah, was uh, a little bit of everything at once roast for you. Looks good. It looks nice, dude. Mm-hmm. It, I, it tastes even better. I'll try it sometime when it's earlier in the yeah. day. I'm an old man. When it's, <laughs> when it's proficient to try right. it. <laughs> when it's like a, a normal time to be drinking a little bit of yeah. coffee, yeah. not uh seven o'clock at night or whenever time this is right now you'll be hearing this in the morning but this is not the morning yeah. in the universe <laughs> we're in. <laughs> right in the alternate timeline it might be the morning but right now it's not but yeah. i'm drinking it anyway i got the the caffeine tolerance yeah it's yeah a, it, it's a type of colombian coffee too so it holds a lot of moisture this this one in particular is big bean uh, we like to call it like it's called excelso mm-hmm. and basically that just means like bigger moisture beans so this coffee works for like a lot of different types of roasts it works for light medium dark dark roast uh italian roast french roast which is kind of like we're in the middle of your guys's blend is at there and yeah it's good for this i mean it's it's dark roast so it's a little less caffeinated so we can drink it at night and kind of be fine, but right, not really. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, it tastes delicious, and uh, we put it through the French press upstairs. Mm-hmm. It's great for espresso, too, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm super excited to uh, see what the people think. Yeah, I mean, the bag is cool, too, like the matte black, the black label. We don't, believe it or not, I have yet to do a bag that's just, like, all black and matte. Completely looking. blacked out. Yeah, I, it's, I just realized that. I'm like, wow, we do hmm. a bunch of colors with a matte black, but... I think black and white is such a clean, simple, mm-hmm. classy look. Too. It's the new every color, you know. Everything it wants, baby. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Boom. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Got to throw that in there where I can, man. <laughs> so is it the perfect blend for podcasting? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's for sure. This, um, it, it's the one that really gets the podcast going. It, it will change the way you you think. <laughs> the whole dynamic of everything. I feel it all coming together. Yeah. Even even better than it normally does. It's mm-hmm. a very See? it's a very clairvoyant <laughs> coffee. Yeah, Part right out here. I love it. So Doug, you've been roasting coffee for a couple of years now mm-hmm. through uh, North Edge Craft Coffee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, How did you get into co- the coffee business? This I love telling the story. It may be kind of like a ramble, or people might find it boring, but to me, it's it's cool. Um, it's okay. We're not here for the people. We're yeah, here for us. We're not here for the people. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, yeah. people. <laughs> right. Just kidding. We love Just you guys. Just kidding. Love you, Patreon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Patreon and everybody likes us on Facebook. You guys are the best. <laughs> um, you you don't come out of high school or you're even in high school. You're like, someday I'm going to roast coffee. <laughs> you hardly even drink coffee at that point. So I wasn't into any of that. I was actually into like 
you know, filmmaking in high school, I was into, like, uh, historical stuff. I liked working with, like, wildlife and stuff like that. I always wanted to do something like that. And then I end up in sales. <laughs> so I, who, yeah, that's kind of the catch all of it. Yeah, maybe, I mean, you know I worked. I, mean? I started like working out of high school at Plastec and mm-hmm. stuff. So I, I worked there for many years. You know, that was always a good job. And Plastec is like Erie's best like business for sure, in a, in a hands down sense. But I I didn't want to do that forever. So I got into fitness. Actually, we I started. Uh, managing the gyms over uh, like iron oxygen fitness when it was iron oxygen oh cool and uh fitness you so i was kind of like their marketing director and a little bit of sales did that for quite some time and then they started level red boxing which uh became franchisable which was all cool again it wasn't something i could retire from it wasn't something i saw myself doing forever Mm -hmm. and it was such a like a wake-up call when i thought that way so I ventured on into the world and to sales, doing this, doing that. Um, but there came a time I just wanted to do like part-time work. Um, Mill Creek Coffee, where the building's at now, is actually where high-pressure equipment used to be, which is where my mom works. Hmm. Um, so my mom and Anita, the owner, knew each other, and they just so happened to be like past. I don't. <laughs> I want to imagine that they're just in their shopping carts, like, oh hey. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> By the way, my, my son needs a job. Here's his resume. Like, Check it out. Yeah, this is him. <laughs> like, She has it in her back pocket. Like, ready All to moms know. do keep that they just do. in case. They you do. Know my social I mean? security just in case. Right. You know. <laughs> Anything you might need. Anything you might need about. Right? <laughs> <First certificate. laughs> it's hidden somewhere in a drawer. That's what it felt like. Yeah. I was like, mom, like, why are you just giving away my... It's quite personal information. You know? <laughs> She's like, Anita's a great you know, businesswoman. You'll love her. Just go in. Just go in and check it out. I'm like, fine. Like, all right. I guess it's it's a coffee company. It'd be fine. It, it maybe it's fun. So I go there and I, you know, I do a full on tour of Mill Creek Coffee. And at this point, North Edge really wasn't a thing yet. It was in thought. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did a tour. Uh, they needed some warehouse help, so I just did warehouse. I just like worked part time in there for the summer and everything. Um, while trying to look for a different job and really didn't get anywhere with it for quite some time. And then I found myself more and more invested into this because I started to learn more about like coffee and coffee business. I had no idea where like coffee came from. No one really realizes that it comes from like these third world countries and stuff. And it's kind of like pristine. Mm -hmm. Um, For example, Colombia. That's crazy. Like this at one point was in Colombia. That's right. It made it all the way here. It made it all the way here into our basement. We're drinking it on a podcast. Hell yeah. yeah. Isn't that cool? Like from the jungles of Colombia. Yeah. Like at one point it passed through like whatever, all kinds of stuff. That's just one coffee. There's coffees all around the world on the equator. So like that, that was so interesting to me. I needed to learn more about this. I was pretty much invested after like a year and uh i became full-time at one point i'm like i'll just you know if this is still what i need to be doing in life i'll, I'll just keep doing it full-time so they brought me on full-time and then i started to learn more about like north edge they would talk about how they wanted to start the roasting company to mill creek coffee mill creek coffee is the distributor mm-hmm. you know national brand stuff and uh you know cups lids all all business the business stuff office coffee supplies mm-hmm. Uh, it was also doing its own roasting, but not on a large scale. There was room for that. They just didn't have it yet. So that's actually what came about for North Edge. So I worked in tandem. North Edge was birthed right when I started like full time. So I did the marketing with that. I, I I fully invested in like the marketing of it and all learning coffee at the same time. I, I eventually became a coffee snob easily. Right. Uh, drinking coffee all the time yeah and that was that was a perk i drink i haven't paid for a cup i mean unless it's somewhere cool <laughs> i haven't paid for a cup of coffee in quite some time so that's that's a good perk yeah that's the dream right yeah. there um, and you've done such a good job with your marketing too cause thank see, you yeah. north edge like i mean yeah i'm all trying the coffee places that i go to <laughs> yeah. surf north edge you yeah. know what i mean mm-hmm. they got uh, other coffees too but they definitely mm-hmm. carry at least one of your coffees you right know? yeah and they, it's become such a such a saturated thing and honestly it's not like about like pushing sales it's never was about that like it was about making the best coffee like mm-hmm. you can make cost effective coffee and then push it and just be like you're saving money buying this do that yeah you want to save money don't you of course everybody does yeah and then this economy right exactly it's turbulent (laughs) so 
you know, we had to get around that hump. And that at this time, too, like, supporting local was just kind of, like, people were just saying it. Like, support local. But no one really was. This was a perfect time for North Edge to start. And then COVID happened, too, of course. So we'll get into that. <laughs> but this was a perfect time to start and be like, no, seriously, like, support local. Like, get that dollar more coffee per bag, whatever, because you're going to have a way better product and you're not going to want to go back to a, a regular know, coffee. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So to go back to where I came in play, the, the head roasting job of North Edge, this is like two years down the road, the head roasting position slash, uh, you know, the vice president was no longer in the company anymore. So they left that door wide open or, you know, they were going to have to try to figure something else out. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'll, I'll do it. Like, I'll give it my best shot. I love this. I love North Edge. It's, it's already a part of me. Um, I'll give it a shot. And that was like three years ago almost now. And I, like, after the first week of getting that job and getting the feel for, like, how to run a coffee company, I was like, I'm doing this forever. This is so cool. Hell yeah. I needed to do the marketing thing. I wanted to do... You know, I learned a bunch of how to roast. I went to classes. I went to business classes. Um, I did collaborations with anyone I could. Like, I just want people to experience their own version of their copy. Like, even just this, you know, for a podcast and everything, it's, that's everything. That's, that's cool. It's not just like, okay, another cafe is opening. Like, let's, you know, have them do the coffee, blah, blah, blah. Like, I want people to come up with cool ideas for their coffee, and, like, we can do that. We can come together and do something different. Yeah. All while selling across the country. Right. you you got to make things exciting. Mm-hmm. And a, a quality product always speaks much louder than any – I mean, if it's quality product, people are going to want it, and mm-hmm. people are going to buy it. Mm-hmm. And that speaks to, like, your skill as a roaster. So I'm sure that was, like, a, a big learning curve, kind of. Yeah, I was thrown right into it and in the best way possible. Like, it was the best thing that's ever happened to me other than my daughter and, you know, my life. But it was literally the best thing that's ever came in my path. It chose me. It literally chose the end of the – to wrap this up with that, it chose me. Like, it just so happened to happen. Right. I never one day was like, I'm going to become a professional coffee you roaster. You think your mom thought of this when, when no, she gave no, that resume like, out? Isn't that funny? We go back to it. I'm like, mom, that was the best thing ever. Like, and she I always got your back. Yeah, You're always like, right. Yeah, yeah that's fun. right. That's She'll sit if there and be like, listening, mom. see, yeah. <laughs> mom told you. <laughs> told you. You should have been listening to me the whole time <laughs> the whole when you're right. a child. A child. <laughs> yeah, your adolescent. teenage years. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Cool. So now we got this coffee. You got this amazing company. It sounds like you're getting really, you've been able to learn so much from a small start Mm -hmm. about like business, about marketing, about coffee roasting and the science that goes behind it. When uh, we were testing out coffees before we came out with this roast, you have like this big scientific setup and this like extreme roaster that like, it probably tells like the temperature down to like the ten hundredth or thousandth yeah. of a degree yep so when when you're roasting coffee like what what makes the difference because you said like this bean itself can be multiple different kinds of roasts mm-hmm. and when and i'm sure all the roasts taste like probably pretty i mean i'm sure I, uh, most people could tell the difference between a light roast of this same bean mm-hmm. and a dark roast of this mm-hmm. bean. So what's going on that gives it that d- different flavor in there? Do, do you, can you speak to that? Yeah, a lot? it basically, you know, it has all all to do with uh, your momentum in your machine. Mm-hmm. You know, the heat is being run off of gas and everything, but it's all about the momentum and the, the turnaround, what we like to call, uh, well, what it is called first crack, second crack. First crack is like the first development of the coffee. Like now it's coffee. This is light roast. Like this is where you can pick or choose or know your knowledge about that coffee on where it's going to end up. Such as white coffee. Like we know that's like that first crack. That's it. Like it's done. That's, that's basically that's it. And that's, that's white coffee. Now, you know, like uh, Columbia Excelso dark roast, like this is going to go a little further into second crack. It needs to go to this degree. It needs to look like this. It needs to smell like this. So it's it's basically all in your sniffer, in your head, and in your in your knowledge of that bean. Mm-hmm. Um, not all coffees though can be multiple different types of coffees. Like there are a bunch, actually more coffees than not, that are like this is going to be a light roast. If you were to roast it dark, it's too long. It's Things like that. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. You got to find where the development notes are. 
right? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> depending on where you get your coffee also makes a huge difference. Yeah, it's it's really about the, like the processing after they've picked it off the plant. Um, we have a really cool coffee uh, from Nicaragua. It's a honey processed coffee, and that's some of my favorite type of processing where they uh, take the beans like off the plant and um, leave the cherry still on the coffee a little bit, the pulp mm -hmm. naturally. And it makes it taste and smell like sweeter. If you were to see it, like it's like mucinage. Like it's just like holding like a handful of boogers, basically. Mm. It's kind of a gross way of putting it, but <laughs> that's the good stuff for the beans. Like it dries on that and it's going to taste sweet eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, th that roasts kind of a certain way. You don't want to roast that off. So it's like that. It's, it's special coffees for special ways. Um, the thing with coffee, too, is like it's almost always organic. But not every coffee farm has, like, the capability to put that certification on it. Sure. So when people ask, like, okay, but I want an organic coffee, like, well, if you think about the process, it's really pretty organic from the start. I mean, you're drinking or eating something that's almost never going to be organic versus coffee. It's, like, it's pretty darn close almost always. Right. There's not a lot of processing that goes into it. Yeah. It's, it's all, you know, it's all done by the earth and it ends with roasting, you mm -hmm. know, which is nothing but heat right it's not like electricity it's like a, not like a microwave you yeah. know what i mean it's not so, radiated I, i'm coffee ignorant They're, they don't need to uh utilize any preservatives mm -hmm. do they for no. like coffee beans no, no i mean a little bit too at the same time it really just depends on the country uh if they're using water they might use mountain water process if it's like a a decaf, like they'll either use certain chemicals not a lot of people like, and then they'll use like natural processes where they'll use fruits to actually extract uh, the caffeine out of beans. Yeah, it's called EA, an EA process. They just literally use certain type of fruits that they know, like putting this fruit in a barrel of water will suck it dry, <laughs> you know, suck all the caffeine out. So the preservatives that they use are also natural too. Yeah, but some do have to rely on, you know, man-made objects and chemicals so we got fruit is. extraction for decaffeinated do we have any like fruit infusions yes yes not personally we don't have that yet i am learning yeah i, I see all these really interesting yeah. flavored coffees out there that yeah. are like you know they're not they're like regular coffee they don't mm -hmm. look like they're they're there's not like special fruit or herbs mm -hmm. or whatever mixed in the coffee it's just coffee beans yeah it's it's basically like making wine but for coffee and i'm gonna give a shout out to onyx coffee company because i learned this from them we we tried one of their concord grape infused uh fermented coffees and it mm. was so good and i just buy it and that's the thing with coffee too like you can drink something at least for me you can drink it and be like and you kind of just like realize how they did it. You don't know the knowledge. You don't know even how to do it, but you realize it. I realized how they fermented. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's already a step in the right direction of how to do it. Yeah. So someday there, there's a future plan right there. Right. You, oh, yeah. I mean, you don't know what it, what exists until you see it, mm -hmm. you know, and try and it for yourself, especially coming into this as like a complete novice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, finding all these different things. Cause like, that Concord grape, I'm sure, like, tastes way different than, like, any, you know, normal coffee. Yeah, it was like drinking wine. <laughs> it was, yeah. like, really, it was just hot coffee wine, That's but cool. in a good way. It was it was really cool. And I'm um, sure there's tons of other stuff you could infuse it as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, Concord is just one. It's right. just any fruit. Like, so I hope to get to that point someday. Um, I hope to do it first. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a coffee race, but uh, everything, you know, coffee is kind of competitive, too. And sure. The breweries, I... I I actually am jealous of them because they're all like good buddies and everything. Like, you know, as far as I see, they can pass knowledge onto one another. Breweries like to do things with their breweries. Mm -hmm. Coffee company, it's it's different. Like, mm -hmm. you know, white coffee, do it first. Did it. Right. <laughs> you got to like get there and get it going and, and be that person that's – because it's more of like um, a staple business mm -hmm. versus the breweries. Like you can try multiple different beers, different breweries. Coffee, it's like – you know you have your coffee you have your coffee and you have what that coffee company does and uh it's kind of like competitive in that sense which is kind of nice i i like that competitive edge and right <clears throat> it keeps things exciting and going I, I love to compete over just about anything as well mm -hmm. i feel like with coffee too more than i'm gonna say more than any other beverage like if i have a 
bad cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Like I am never drinking coffee at that right. establishment or that brand of coffee again. Right. Well said. And, and then like with beer, you can have a bad beer knowing it's just that beer. Mm-hmm. It's not that company. But the coffee, you're right. It could be – that's almost like a tell-all even though sometimes it's not. Like we certainly have bad coffees that people in my – it's it's almost like a preference thing at the same time too because mm-hmm. – I even, you know, I've even done coffees that I don't like, but I know that other people do. Mm -hmm. You got to put yourself in like everyone else's shoes, but it can be like the one wrong person that that's just how it be. You know, you got to open your mind to a lot more than just that one bad coffee, but sure, not everyone rolls that way. And I, and I got to understand that. And I think that alcohol has a certain social aspect to it Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways that I might not, that I can, I can relate to coffee, but not in the same way. You know, a lot of times you'll have like a cup of coffee with a friend, but like Mm -hmm. usually that's reserved for something where, uh, you know, something serious is going to take place. Yeah. Or or even starting your day for the day. Like this is your pickup because of the caffeine, you know, Mm -hmm. and then like alcohol, it's more like a social thing. Yeah. It's like an unwind. It's a relax. This is like, I'm getting ready to go do stuff. Mm -hmm. And the alcohol is more like I'm you know, right, chilling not out. Do stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is a celebration. This yeah. is me hanging out with my friends. This is whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also, you know, once you get a few, few drinks in the, the taste of, of the alcohol seems to be a, uh, <laughs> a it. very background. Yeah. Thing, yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, for the people that like PBR out there, you know, good for you, but also like, it's just beer. <laughs> like, right. just drinking it. Yeah. <laughs> With any of them out there, you know, a lot of brand loyalty. And yeah. one of the things that I've noticed tasting different things or doing like different um, I was in like a chili contest recently and oh, that's <laughs> yeah, it was super fun. I smoked a chili. It was incredible. It what? turned out great. I thought it was the best chili I've ever eaten. <laughs> but like when you're, t- when there's like a bunch of different chilies there, like after like the second bowl of chili, they all just taste like chili. chili. Yes. And that's the same thing with coffee. In fact, this needs to be more of like, I thought out knowledge and maybe there's something like a first in there that coffees really blend together and that's a like you really got to like know your palate like you either have it or you don't Mm -hmm. i luckily that's another thing too with starting the bit like getting in the business i knew i had it like i knew i had that palate to taste this but it's hard too like you can teach yourself but even after that it's either you do or you don't like not everyone's gonna get it and that doesn't mean you can't do coffee it's just like there's a different step to that but yeah, you can certainly get too crazy with trying the same coffees over and over again. It's like that with wine, too. If you go, like, sure. on a wine tour, they Any make you eat crackers like and oyster crackers and stuff. And that's honestly the same concept for coffee. Eat, eat an oyster cracker yeah. <laughs> or something. Something water. to cleanse your palate. Mm-hmm. And I think that, like, really tasting it and really enjoying it. And this goes with, that, like, any tasting or any sort of, like, culinary thing. You have to have, like, that conscious awareness. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like, I'm... I'm consciously drinking this coffee and I'm letting it absorb into my taste buds and I'm seeing the different flavors and enjoying the aroma and all that thing compared to just like slugging down it. Yeah. A cup right. of coffee or a beer or mm-hmm. chili or whatever it is that you're you're tasting at that mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And being able to have like your, all these different options and all these different crafts, I think like craft coffees allows people to to have that awareness and realize it's not all just coffee you know we're not just drinking Folgers here right exactly yeah it's not just like your smooth everyday coffee or even just like the store-bought uh freshness has a lot to do with it um you know bean to cup is what I always like to push like you know once it's ground like that's kind of it you're kind of on the time clock coffee never goes bad unless it gets wet Mm -hmm. it just loses its value over time even whole bean like it'll lose its value over time sure um but if you really want like that satisfying cup like you want to drink it right away and and keep it as fresh as you can. Uh, keep it in certain containers is always smart too. So keep it out of the light too. Yeah, yeah. Dark space. Uh, it's it's all like from the start of the roast until it's done, until it's packaged, until it's you know put in the bag, certain bags. Like it, it's a whole long business of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, that that helps a lot with someone's product. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that. Another interesting, like the culture around coffee, I feel like is a little bit more scientific yeah, and like yeah. personally involved too, because mm-hmm. like when you're drinking alcohol or, you know, any other 
sort of beverage, wine, whatever, most of the time you are not really involved in the creation process. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you get your favorite beer or whatever from your favorite microbrewery or favorite local brewery or whatever, and you drink it. Whereas with coffee, you got options still. You know, you mm -hmm. have to kind of maintain the coffee. You have to pick out, you know, am I going to drip this coffee? Am I going to do a pour over? Mm -hmm. Am I going to put it in espresso, French press it, whatever. Right. And it allows a little bit more of that personal attachment or that personal mm -hmm. involvement when you're brewing a coffee compared to some of the other beverages that people, you know, grow particularly fond mm -hmm. of. Yeah, you have varieties of trying these different coffees versus wine, beer, and all that. It's kind of cold, right? Mm -hmm. You don't drink warm beer. Sometimes you drink warm wine, but it's got to be a special one. Or yeah, yeah. I feel like it's a, with what you were saying, like the the consumer being involved in the creation process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know getting the beans and whatever and i feel like that's a double-edged sword because it is a great thing you know but there's a lot of people that you know we live in an instant gratification society yeah. like give me some k cups and yeah. like just yeah, right. throw it in there and get it done with as quick uh -huh. as possible and it, it, it is it, it's diff it's just a different different kind of beast than than any beverage mm -hmm. that's really out there on the market yeah when you're going and buying it you know you have to other than like maybe tea under, right? other than tea, tea. Yes. other than tea yeah but i feel like tea is not even not to as high a degree personable well, as like making water. coffee yeah, yeah. right <laughs> tea bag. you got a tea bag <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tea although bag. the tea like loose leaf tea is sure. becoming pristine and stuff like for coffee and a lot of coffee companies also do tea because mm -hmm. the knowledge is kind of there and it's kind of like hand in hand um we don't do like loose leaf tea or anything but milk Creek coffee does do like national brand teas so it is there who's to say someday that loose leaf tea might not also be a north edge thing the other roasting co coffee companies do it so it definitely goes with it but but you're exactly right it's it's something so like particular People either want to enjoy it or they want to get it and go. Right. You know, people want to, people will look at Starbucks. They will literally stand in line for 20 minutes. Oh my God. And pay $6 for a drink or something. I bet you it's six. I bet you it's $6. At least, seven yeah. now. It has to be. Yeah. More than that, if you're getting like a, a double shot or right. like anything that's somewhat special and yeah. not just like a, a standard drink there mm -hmm. but also everybody has like their own personal drink you know what i mm -hmm. mean their own uh you know some people love caramel macchiatos mm -hmm. or americanos or whatever it is mm -hmm. there's so many different variations or a nitro brew you know we just yeah. got these nitro brews um when we were down in baltimore mm -hmm. a couple weekends ago and uh they're you know a nitro brew is entirely different from like a nor you know a standard coffee yeah you know just the flavor and it being mm -hmm. cold and the nitrogen adds like a certain sweetness or a thickness creaminess however you want to describe it mm -hmm. to the to the coffee compared to like a normal roast i was just talking about nitro brew with uh, a friend and we were trying to wrap our head around that and boy yeah that's a whole different animal but i'm seeing it become more and more of a thing mm -hmm. like they're finding ways to make it easier for people to do in their business soon it'll be easy to do at home so like it's it's being aware of like what's new like what's going to catch people's attention because if it catches your attention it's gonna end up being right a, a reason to do something for right um, and we don't live like people often think like they are like the only one or like they're on this personal thing but really like if if i enjoy something more than likely there's going to be other people that enjoy it as well yeah. you know what i mean right or something that catches my attention is going to catch the eye of somebody else mm -hmm. we're not like yeah even if it's extremely niche yeah there's right. other people out there that are going to be mm -hmm. into it too i've learned to the, just like you know just go with it and even if it's something sm the white coffee the white roast was totally something small mm -hmm. i learned about it just like off a blurb or like a you know something i just knew it was kind of like a california thing i didn't know much about it so all i did was research it and basically did it yeah. <laughs> just did it just for go fun. for it and i was like whoa like wait a minute this holds more caffeine no one wait a minute no other roastery does this around here and then Tyler with Smile on the Ghost came around. And he's like, you know, I want to do ghost roast. I'm like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was meant to be. Like, I got something. He loves light coffee, too. <laughs> yeah. That's like yes. His jam. Yeah. It we was totally to, the thing. Yeah. I, I remember that because me and him love light, co light coffee. Mm -hmm. And uh, my girlfriend loves dark roasts. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was always kind of a... You know, we try to find a middle ground or we get up, mm -hmm. sneak a little bit of light into the machine every now and then. <laughs> but, uh, 
but yeah, it's good. So what do you, what's your what's your coffee of choice? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, that's like picking your favorite movie <laughs> uh, for me. So I I basically am like kind of I don't want to say seasonal, but I I change a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I love light roast too. Honestly, I, if I had to say, it'd be more light medium roast because that's mm-hmm. where like the real challenge is. And that's where the real deal coffee is, higher end and and more, you know, particular. But of course, there's a bunch of dark roasts that are good and everything. Like the Italian roast that we do, the uh, Italian Darth roast. Yeah, that was totally a Star Wars thing, and I wouldn't have done it if it didn't have something to do with like dark roast. You know what I mean? It mm-hmm. just worked. I wouldn't do an Italian Darth roast and it'd be light. Well, you can't. Yeah, you know? exactly. Darth roast, dark roast. So. Um, basically right now I'm into probably like good medium roasts. And do you usually do drip or do you make espresso? All over. (laughs) Honestly, every day is something. I mean, we, and you saw it, the, uh, touch espresso machine that we have. Super cool. It's literally an espresso machine that you just hit. One of our sponsors has one in his house. Oh, really? One of the the same ones? Yeah, yeah, we didn't know him. Yeah. I'm sure you know him, Nick. Uh, yeah. Ferguson. Oh my gosh. Okay. Not to Sweet. drop his legal name out there, but yeah, he's one of my boys. <laughs> That's he's so cool. He's one of the sponsors of this show. Oh he, no way. Yeah. He, Small world. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. He has uh, one of your machines gets all of your coffee from you guys. <laughs> That's so cool. One Sweet. of the or one of the I don't know if it's your machine or whatever, but yeah. I know he gets all of his coffee. Yeah, we're wholesaling those uh, those nice new machines, but I'm using that a lot. Mm-hmm. That's just for like I need a cup of coffee done, and so it's mostly like lattes. I love a good latte. Sure. Even when we go to new coffee places that we got to try the coffee i find myself getting their latte which is almost like uh i shoot myself in the foot because i should try their coffee black Mm -hmm. if i really want to know what their coffee tastes like lattes is just anyone can make no that's not true anyone can put you know make a latte together but not everyone can make a good latte and it's honestly by by chance Mm -hmm. because not every latte is the same that's what's so cool about it not every cup of coffee in a cafe is the same right like, it's that barista. It's that person putting together your drink. Mm-hmm. But I drink a lot of lattes just because I, I need a good latte. But How scientific do you get when you're making your own coffee? Are you, like, weighing beans? And- yeah. <laughs> yes. You should say, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, boy. And, like, and you got, you'd be like, what is this nut doing? And like, no, he's got love- literally three beans. and like, they weigh a gram. <laughs> I love it when coffee places do that. Yeah. Especially, we went to this one coffee shop in Cincinnati, and you could tell the guy was just, like, a huge nerd. He had big, like, dark glasses <laughs> like I did. He used to be a chemist. He's got like a fucking digital scale. He's weighing up the beans. He's yeah. got some crazy machines in the background and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And he's jamming out to like some real funky ass shit. <laughs> he's just having a good time selling records, selling like vintage clothes and stuff, and just th- and making amazing coffee. Living nice. his best fucking Living life. Living his best life. Yeah, left yeah. corporate world, opened up a coffee shop <laughs> in like a small little like part of a house or something or part of a condo. It was amazing. I'm dude. jealous. Yeah, dude. I loved it. Like he was just like my he was my spirit. Yeah. For that day, you know what I mean? His name was Kenny too, wasn't it? I don't remember. It sounds like it, a Kenny. It, he could be Kenny. <laughs> Kenny or like He's Tom Ken- or something. <laughs> I don't know. He was great. He was definitely he used to be a chemist and <laughs> I don't remember what the coffee shop is, but shout out to you guy in Cincinnati who's living his best life. <laughs> he's coffee, just like, making, yeah. 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 He's like controlling the temperature and everything too that it brews at. He's like, oh, this one likes this one likes to be a little bit hotter. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, talking like, to yeah, it. dude. While talking to us, he's like filling yeah. me in because I'm like, oh, dude, you're you're going fucking hard. I, and I, I and like to me, like when people have like a passion about something or like are obsessed with something, mm-hmm. I want to like absorb some of that knowledge yeah. or some of that passion or some of that, you know, whatever Absolutely. that energy that's going on in there, something that they're vibing with and mm-hmm. doing. You know, that feeling is contagious, you know? Yeah. I, I can absolutely get into anything other than just coffee, too. Like, I, I would most definitely get into everything all at once. Everything at once, baby. <laughs> everything, yeah. at once. Yeah. everything at once. That's how this started, too. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that, like, holds, maybe not holds people back, but, like, we just built a computer, and uh, I'm not, I'm by no means a computer fucking expert or anything mm-hmm. like that. But like having the courage or the tenacity to just like fucking go for it, like you and the light mm-hmm. roast, you know what I mean? You didn't really know what you're doing. Yeah. You read a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, hey, what? What's the worst that could happen? Right. It was like this much coffee, and you know, we do that daily. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it, there's no loss in going out and trying your mm-hmm. hand at things mm-hmm. and exploring the different avenues that are out there for whatever it is whether it's coffee or building a computer or having a podcast or <laughs> any, any right. of these things you know people are 
raised and uh, instructed in such a homogenized mm-hmm. way that it's like trying to fit a bunch of you know different shapes into mm-hmm. you know the wrong slots. Yeah. So you got to go out there and you know try different things even mm-hmm. if there's something you haven't been uh, right. subjected to before. Mm-hmm. So many That's people a good way of putting it. have like that big fear of failure too. Like. I I can't even tell you how many times we've like f- messed up this mm-hmm. podcast mm-hmm. or messed up like any avenue of my life that I've ever tried <laughs> to be good at. <laughs> and like the thing is, is you just keep going. You, mm-hmm. you learn from those mistakes and you keep trying and getting things together and do better next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the older we get, the more we realize like it don't matter. <laughs> like, yeah, it, fuck it, dude. We're just human, like, right? You know, exactly. Is somebody gonna make fun of me for? Well, maybe. Yeah, who maybe. Who shit? cares? Yeah, I mean, who cares, dude? Let them laugh. Let yeah. them say that, uh, you know, I'm doing crazy shit or whatever the whatever yeah. they want to say, you know? Mm-hmm. One time I saw somebody take coffee beans and, like, drop them next to their ear. You oh, know, really? like, like listening to the. I don't know if they were just messing around or what, but they looked like they were pretty serious about what they, they were. They could have been because, yeah. you know, and this is, this is sometimes post-roast, but pre-roast... When grinding, uh, like, a handful of green bean together and, like, trying to hear it and trying to feel it, that is a quality check in a sense. So he probably really did know stuff. (laughs) That doesn't sound too far off, but but still pretty crazy. (laughs) Yeah, it was at a coffee. I'm not, I'm not, you know, as much like Tony. Like, I'm like, this is what I want. I'm going to go sit down until it's ready, you know. But, like, I remember watching this dude, and I was like, what is going on here? Wow, that's funny. Yeah, you're not a real coffee nerd until you're just going. Like, jingling (laughs) coffee around. That's Shaking the bag and stuff, making sure you know what you're doing. This is going to be some good-ass coffee. (laughs) This one sounds extra jingly, you know what I mean? I'm sure there's some sort of quality that you can tell from, like, hearing it, like, Mm -hmm. rattling around in, like, a... A, a jar yeah. on your hand or whatever yeah. something i could pick up from it eventually if i do it enough yeah. that's the other thing you know you just gotta keep you just gotta keep doing it yeah. yeah yeah and there's all kinds of new ways out there to learn coffee like in quality of coffee or how to do coffee like it's not it coffee is like one of the longest standing found things of all human history mm-hmm. and we're still finding new ways to do it like white coffee is probably not that old like mm-hmm. the idea so, like, isn't that nuts? Like, it's such a commodity that can always change. Like, it is the second, maybe even different by now, but it used to always be the second largest trade item in the world next to oil, behind oil. Wow. Look at oil. Right? <laughs> Look what oil does to earth, you know, and, and, and countries. So It's crazy. And coffee has been, like, such a valued commodity for such a long mm-hmm. time, too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Coffee has, like, its own inherent value like i remember like when covid hit too we're like stockpiling coffee yeah so i'm like it's this is gonna be ripple. if the earth does get destroyed and we're having like <laughs> all out anarchy in the streets i'm gonna have this coffee that's yeah. gonna be more valuable than gold mm-hmm. you yeah. know because people love it and yeah. it's great and amazing and just a good drink we watch the actual market because it's a market sensitive item it has its own market it's called the sea market coffee mm. market and you can watch it like world events control coffee it's so nuts like ethiopia was in like a civil war and that influenced or de-influenced their market like right. so weird and you know there's always something going on in these other countries too stuff that you don't even know about mm-hmm. so shortage coffee shortage is a year-round thing right i remember they did a story not too long ago in erie right around COVID time that like like they got wind of like a coffee shortage going on and they actually came and interviewed I was at, they interviewed me it was like at five o'clock in the morning and they were like we want to talk about the coffee shortage I'm like like that was Wednesday yeah, right. <laughs> we're, this on, is all new. we're on Saturday yeah, right like, yeah I'm better. way ahead of this yeah game. I know it. that you happens are... all the time <laughs> it happens all the time do the you you might not know this and this just popped into my head when you were talking about like the South American countries mm-hmm. Do the you think the cartels got something to do with the Absolutely. coffee? Absolutely, yeah. and I I'll go on public to say that. <laughs> Probably, um, who knows? Like, and none of that ever really affects us, as far as I know. Who yeah. we would not ever know, but I'm sure. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of these coffees to even get to us is a whole war in itself. Some have to get airlifted out. Some have to be on God knows what truck. Like a bag of that bag that that Columbia came in was probably on a truck 
the driver had to pay off this certain person to get past this certain gate. Like, you've seen a lot of movies that are like sure, that, or yeah. video mm-hmm. games. Like, it's so true. I, I would love to see it in action someday, like it's a fly in the wall. I remember when we came and, and checked out the, uh, I came and checked out the roast mm-hmm. roastery, and we talked a little bit about like, where the coffee comes mm-hmm. from and most of your coffee comes from like a wholesale distributor mm-hmm. but like somebody is out there making deals with yeah. different tribes yeah, different, different groups of cartels <laughs> yeah. whatever to, it to make this coffee get to where it needs to be <laughs> that sounds right. like i mean you're comfortable and you enjoy where you're at in the coffee game that salesman is yeah. the kind of life I, that's, yeah. that's what interests me. <laughs> right. I want to be the guy going to Col- the Rambo. I want to be the guy going to Colombia and like a bag of cash on your side. <laughs> right. That uh, what was and that Nicolas Cage? The Nicolas Cage movie, Lord of War. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. how I imagine you doing it. Right. <laughs> but I, I, I can't imagine it being that far off either. Yeah. Though, you know, mm-hmm. it's like I got an AK and a fucking ten million dollars. <laughs> I work for Folgers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Starbucks sent me. Yeah. <laughs> I need this coffee now. <laughs> right. oh, oh my god! And uh, it reminds me of like all of those gold mining shows, like when they were gold mining in like Ghana and stuff like that. Yeah, like right. just dealing with like all the different like tribes and people around the area to like be able to mine and stuff. And like mm-hmm. it's just such a, a big process. And it's a shame because like all of these places are kind of, well maybe not all of them i don't i can't really speak to that but a, a number of them come from areas that are not like super super stable yeah no law enforcement not or like may, maybe they have them. law law enforcement but it's not like here it's like yeah. i'm paying the law enforcement to mm-hmm. like to help, to help <laughs> and if and you keep, don't no help right <laughs> yeah oh, so man yeah you know and that's another thing this made me feel super humble being in this business like even though we get in an uproar and storm the Capitol because of something happening, mm-hmm. like, dude, that happens every day for these people. They don't even have a Capitol. Right. Like, I, you know, the laws we have in place, you know, the, the regulations, the regulations, the you start to really like feel good about where we live. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And, right. I'm not out in the, in a, field picking coffee beans and helping yeah. out my next shipment yeah hoping to get get through the border or whatever you know yeah. a literal 25 cents that week or something it's just such a different world yeah mm-hmm. it, it, it it's good that uh would you ever want to do something like that like if you ever like went super like north edge is super hardcore now and yeah. you get, you're like out in the in the mountains like searching out the perfect fucking absolutely <laughs> oh hell yeah that'd be cool that'd be cool to to be known as like <laughs> to climb a mountain to go get the coffee. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. There's people that go and not literally do that, but mostly everyone in coffee business goes to a coffee country to go see it, to go help out at a farm. Like I'm definitely doing that For at sure. least a handful of times before I die. I got to do that. What about the crazy coffees out there that are like ungodly expensive? Those you know are hard to get. Like Kenya right now is a big one like i haven't been able to really see any kenya coffee in quite some time because it just like skyrocketed Mm -hmm. but i that has that comes to like you know how to know like what's going on in their country i can't even imagine that's part of ethiopia and everything boy yeah it's not a good place to be for those guys not a good place to be in fact i was talking to um one of the people we buy coffee from and he goes like yeah we take people you know, partners with us to some countries sometimes to see the coffee farms, see what you're buying and stuff because it's nice. They can only do that now for like Brazil, mm-hmm. and even Brazil is like not that safe for like Americans and right. stuff to see that. They don't. They used to take people to like Mexico or uh, like Guatemala. They don't do that anymore. So mm-hmm. that kind of kind of goes to show, like, oh boy, yeah. it's it's taking a turn in the world, but. Hmm. So more will be revealed in the coffee market. Yeah, Doug's gonna fly out there, yep. sort it out for us. <laughs> you're coming. You're gonna I'm do coming. It. I'm, gonna, I'm coming. Yeah, you're gonna, you and I are gonna do it, and you'll be the guy that gets me the coffee. That's too. right. <laughs> yeah, you'll be sitting on the uh, the landing strip, and I was like, I'll be back in a couple days. Right. <laughs> Don't worry. This is too dangerous this for is you. Too dangerous. <laughs> and, and by landing strip, we mean like an open area of yeah. grass in the middle of the forest. <laughs> Jurassic yeah. Park three, yeah. <laughs> where it's just a random runway. Well, yeah, just a little runway made of grass. <laughs> it's what I was born. To do. <laughs> I, I think you were meant for this. You 
were meant for this. Yeah. This is so cool. maybe maybe you need to. We'll, we'll give your we'll give you Dave's resume to hand off to your distributor. Yeah. 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 I got the we'll guy. Get we'll get something together. Yeah. Dude, he's ready. This oh, could man. be my uh, Patreon. This challenge. is your big shot. Yeah, dude. We get That's ten Patreon shot. subscribers. We'll send Dave to a third world country. Oh my god. That's bring us so back. New I'm coffee. in tears. This is so funny. So just just for the record, for you and you know, if you don't know, and everyone listening, when we hit five Patreon subscribers, Ten. we have well, five. Well, well, when we hit five, uh, Tony had to do or is doing a primitive weekend. That's right. So we no said, food, no water, three days what? in the woods, with no technology. <laughs> wait, so wait, you guys have like the fans that are like, I want to see Tony do that. Well, I don't know if we do. I just. <laughs> I, mean, I just offered to do it. Okay, fair enough. And then, then we probably like, yeah. I, and I did it. I offered to do it on a show. So, oh like, I God. can't go back on my word, wow. you know? I, so, I'm, I'm locked into this. So, that's locked in. So, if we get nice. 10, I got to go to a third world country <laughs> and pick up some coffee beans. <laughs> do it. Yeah, do subscribe. It. Subscribe. <laughs> Oh, That'll be so almost enough to pay for a flight, I think. Yeah, yeah. all one way. Right, yeah. <laughs> we'll get it covered. I might not need the flight back. You don't, yeah. need don't plan on it. Right, take a boat back anyway. Get like a. You'll a, figure it out, maybe. It out. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be, I mean, we'll have all the coffee, so you'll have all the the money for the coffee. You know yeah, I mean? you know what? Yeah, you're going to have to try to figure it out if you want to come That's back. part of the challenge, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a push you need. I, <laughs> Safety. To really make it, th- make it through and make it back in one piece, you got to trade and barter. And... I haven't just met you, Doug. I really appreciate the trusting bond that we have. That you're going to give me a big bag of money and send me to a third world country. Figure it out, man. Right. Yeah. Send me anywhere. Here's, here's you know, $100,000 come back with this stuff oh i got robbed <laughs> right just never hear from him again yeah, who's gone. to say that hasn't happened already i don't know yeah. right. well, we never know oh man Good stuff. <laughs> someday. someday we do need to find dave a serious challenge yeah do, though dude I mean, this is a completely serious challenge. I, Throw me I, in there sometime. I would do it too. I would do that for you guys, just because that sounds fun. Yeah. If you get okay, you do the ten. I'll do the fifteen, and think of a challenge. Right. <laughs> Whenever we get a challenge, you guys heard it here first. Doug's locked <laughs> yeah. in. We get fifteen <laughs> Patreon subscribers. Oh man, do something with like a tattoo. We'll get him a tattoo. We'll get, <laughs> we'll get you to tattoo hatred across your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 only thing is you can't do it outside of. Well, you could probably. I've started there, but. You can't uh-huh. do it. We should get can't Dave do it to get up a here. tattoo. And every, Dave will get an everything at once tattoo. Oh, there you go. See, that's, that's, you're doing that anyway, so there you go. Yeah. Right? That's dedication. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> but you have no See, thoughts about it. Yeah, he's completely world. willing to go to a third world country at this point. <laughs> I don't have a tattoo. It's a bit much. Well, I don't have any, I don't have any tattoos. Oh, you know, so that'd body, be the first one. This body's pure. <laughs> this body's yeah, pure. That's what it is. This is virgin. Yeah. I'm much more. Like that coffee. <laughs> yeah. I'm much more interested in the other option. <laughs> <laughs> Possible certain death or <laughs> your first tattoo. Yeah. That's so good. A scary rich. prospect, right? Yeah. Jeez. Rich. <laughs> like this North Edge, everything at yeah. once, bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> See? Hired. <laughs> Done. Boom. Oh, right. God, I'm in tears. Anyways. Enough about coffee. What was your guys' day? I'm turning this around. Yeah. What, what was... did you guys do today? Oh, dude. Today. My my colleagues gave me a farewell journey or farewell party. Oh, that was today. Well, I'm not starting yet, but uh, we had a party today, and I got to say goodbye to everybody. That was really nice. It was a pleasant surprise. Nice. It was my my one coworker kind of kept letting it slip. She's not really super good at keeping secrets (laughs) that something was going on. So I had a a little inkling, but uh, it was really nice. Did you at least act surprised though? That's oh, yeah. always like, best. oh my god, the well, fake surprise is like, oh. It, it was funny too because I saw everybody like setting up all the stuff outside my office, and I'm like pretending to work and like ignore. Like, oh my god, yes, I can't believe it. So that was really cool. I got. I, I'm gonna miss the group of people that I work with, mm-hmm. but I'm really excited for these new for uh, new adventures on the horizon nice. and uh, new things going on. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah, it's been good, dude. It's been good. We got to get them in on uh, some North Edge coffee, though. Yeah. We don't have a coffee machine. Oh, yeah. At work. At work. So we should put one right there, right? Yeah, we so need it. There's space. Right. Well, I've been waiting for somebody to offer me something. Oh, you mean to at the new job? Table. Oh, they don't have. Okay. No, at the old job. They at didn't the old have, job. Okay. They had K cups. Oh, dude, let's, let's change that. Yeah. And even if they have a K cup machine, we do do, you know, those reusable North Edge. Filters. Oh, yeah, that's right. That you can put North Edge coffee into. And then I actually have suggestions. 
what coffees are good to go with that. Like I, I've, I've researched this cause I know people don't want to go away from the kick up machine. I get it. Mm-hmm. Convenient. Super easy. Yeah. Quick. Just one cup. You're not making a giant pot or anything mm-hmm. like that. You didn't burn any bridges before you left, right? Oh, you didn't no. just go. Yeah, okay, no, cool. no, definitely good. not. Good for I, me. If this job sucks, I'm going back to my other <laughs> okay, job for enough. sure. And they're like, yeah, Tony, you come back anytime. Okay, I'm good. like, okay, well, give me about a week till I'm like pulling my hair out with a big stack of paperwork on my desk that I have no idea what to do with, yeah. and uh, I'll be back. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Totally. They're like, are you going to cry at the party? I'm like, no, I'm going to save it for a week out. Yeah, everything's super overwhelming at my new job, and then I'll cry and be like, oh, how much of an idiot I am for leaving here. And right. going to try something new, that's yeah. what you get. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. <laughs> but that's all part of the process. That's part of growth. That's yeah. part of any new job. You, you can have a couple times where you're ready to, to, to pack it all in and mm-hmm. call and it quits. Call it quits, mm-hmm. yeah. But hopefully you ride out that storm. That's right. But mm-hmm. as far as coffee makers go on the edge or anywhere on this table, any yeah. of you guys who have listened or been on the show or anything like that, we'd love to put like display any sort of products on here or do oh, yeah, whatever cool. you guys are want to want to do. You know, we're excited about that. We're super grateful that anybody at all wants to like sponsor these shows, and uh, we we'll, we're happy to do anything we can to uh, you know continue to publicize that people mm-hmm. and shamelessly plug all the businesses that are incredible around here you know what i mean nice that's what we're here for that's what we're here for shameless plug shameless plugs <laughs> everything at once patreon baby yeah. if you were to like cut like everything out you said before that and we're like that's why we're here shameless plugs <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just exactly. be like perfect timing oh that's man like, the powers of movie magic we don't even know that might that might end up be, that's exactly how it happened <laughs> that, that yeah. might be how this goes in post you're in a meme sensation overnight like, shameless plugs <laughs> yes that's our that's our goal yeah dude give me that tiktok fame and that five minutes i need it we definitely need it nice <laughs> we've been chasing it we've been chasing yeah. it but things i mean things are going good Good. I can't ask for more with a, a brand new year long podcast mm-hmm. or, coming up on a year coming up on a oh, year. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, about cool. about a August. month and a half away, two months away. Any of you people out there that are listening, I want to have like a everything at once party. Yeah. Now that it's on everything like, at one, you know, everything yeah. at one. Yeah. That's what we'll call the party yep. with all of our guests. Have a nice little mixer, a fire in the backyard, hang out in the treehouse, nice. do all the fun stuff that yeah. we, that we like to do and uh, show some gratitude for all the people that have came on and supported us and been a part of this crazy journey here strict dress code though strict dress code. strict dress code. actually <laughs> loki me and dave are having there was a, a competition in the 20s called the dude off where <laughs> in, it took place in new york city and the what was the, the winner lord dude or whatever no his name wasn't lord dude but no the, like the winner of the contest was like the the lord oh, the, the king of the dudes the king of, king the, of the, the dudes, dudes. <laughs> so low-key during this contest me and dave are going to be changing outfits rapidly and being the most dudely dudes that we can do and then you guys will have to pick who's the, who's the, the winner dude-ish. who's the winner of the dude the king of the dudes <laughs> one cool. of us is gonna have our feelings hurt yeah. very badly yeah. you're gonna be at the top of the treehouse too and you're gonna be like yeah you know, dude well, and, and who is doodlier dude. yeah. <laughs> we'll make a shame corner for the person who loses the dude contest to sit in by themselves it'll be interesting because we have very different styles of dress oh perfect yeah, yeah. It, i guess like the winner back when it was going on changed his outfit like 30 times throughout the course of the day and went to like all these different like parties and stuff like that so me and dave are just gonna be like rapid fire transforming into different shit (laughs) how are you gonna like store all this do you just bring like a backpack or well we're just gonna have it here so okay then that's stash it somewhere in the house totally perfect you just go inside yeah i'll just disappear for five minutes and like change and re-quaff my hair and like come back out and be the most dude yeah i might shave my head halfway through it yeah Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a step, dude. You could do that. Yeah, that I would work. I shouldn't have gave that away. Yeah, no, oh, man. There's your ten page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a common thing, though. You see a lot of people on that get once they hit like a certain number of subscribers, will shave their head. Yeah. You I gotta do like it all the If I'm doing a primitive weekend, Dave, you can't just shave your head. Yeah, he's gonna have to shave his head just because he doesn't want the lice. You know, right? right. Or yeah. the fleas, yeah. <laughs> or ticks from exactly. from from the primitive weekend. Yeah, nobody has to worry about what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> I've, I've I've spent too much attention just myself. Right. For you. Oh man, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out. And Dave's gonna do something amazing. I'm gonna do something amazing. I'm documenting the whole thing. It's gonna be really cool. Love Doug, it. 
thanks for coming on the show and thanks, hanging out guys. with us. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do it again. It. Yeah, yeah, dude, it was a good time. Mm-hmm. I had fun hanging out down here. Um, check out North Edge Coffee. Follow them on Facebook, on mm-hmm. Instagram, all that stuff. Check out the shop yes, over sir. there on West 12th Street. Mm-hmm. Um, like and follow all of our posts. Subscribe. Get those Patreon subscriptions in mm-hmm. so that way Dave can do something ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, we love you guys. Cool. Keep coming back. Peace. Peace.